The mysterious disappearances of Brianna Maitland and Maura Murray. Are they connected? Our two Maura Murray videos have left us with more questions than answers. One of our viewers has raised a very important question about the disappearance of another woman 90 miles away from the Murray disappearance site, and as mysterious as the Murray case. Could these two cases be connected? If abducted, could both women have been taken by the same perpetrator? Brianna Maitland quit her job as a dishwasher at the Black Lantern Inn in Montgomery, Vermont, on March 19, 2004. On that day, she completed her GED exam, had lunch with her mother, and said that she was going home to relax before starting her second job. In this video, we examine the mysterious disappearance of Brianna 18 years after she vanished into thin air. What actually happened? Where could she have possibly gone? And is it possible that she is still alive? Brianna Alexandria Maitland was raised by Bruce and Kelly Maitland in the town of East Franklin, close to the Canadian border, where she was born on October 8, 1986. The majority of Brianna's life was rather ordinary. During her sophomore year, though, things reportedly took a turn for the worse. She transferred to a different high school, then left her mother's home and started living with friends. According to Kelly Maitland, there were no big stressors at home, but Brianna preferred couch surfing over staying at home with her parents. She eventually dropped out of high school because she was unable to keep up with the rising demands of her schoolwork and her nomadic living environment. Eventually, she moved in with her close friend Gillian Stout and enrolled in a GED program. She worked as a dishwasher at the Black Lantern Inn and a server at KJ's Diner in St. Albans, Vermont. Maitland hoped that, despite her difficult circumstances, she would be able to get her GED, enroll in college, and make something of her life. Three weeks before her disappearance, Keeley Lacrosse, a former acquaintance, assaulted Brianna Maitland at a party. Her father is certain that Keeley was envious of the attention Maitland was getting from other men at the party, despite the fact that the original cause for the assault remains unknown. Maitland went to the police to file charges against her assailant after sustaining a fractured nose and a concussion as a result of Keeley's brutal assault. Brianna completed her GED exam on March 19, 2004, and passed with flying colors. Her mother took her to a celebratory lunch after she informed her of the news over the phone. Maitland and her mother later went shopping and ran errands. Kelly later told investigators that she was in good spirits and that she and her daughter had discussed the prospect of attending college. However, during their shopping excursion, Maitland saw something that made her feel uneasy. Her mother told detectives she was unaware of what frightened her daughter. Consequently, she ended the shopping trip and informed her mother that she had to get ready for work. She arrived on time at the Black Lantern Inn and finished her shift. Around midnight, Brianna Maitland was invited to join her friends for a late supper. She declined, explaining that she had an early morning shift the next day. She climbed into her vehicle and drove out into the darkness, never to be seen again. On March 20, 2004, police were dispatched to a farmhouse located about one mile from the Black Lantern Inn. There, they discovered Brianna Maitland's vehicle backed against the barn's side. Two of her paycheck stubs were discovered in the front seat, along with a piece of plywood on the trunk. However, there was no trace of Maitland. Three days later, Kelly and Bruce Maitland reported their daughter was missing to the police. The Maitlands were then shown a photograph of their daughter's automobile, which had crashed into the side of the barn. Before her parents reported her missing, the police assumed Brianna Maitland to be a runaway. However, the authorities were now confident that something terrible had occurred. We suspect Brianna was the victim of foul play, Major Glenn Hall of the Vermont State Police said. This is not a dormant case, and we are actively working it. Since then, little information has been made public about Brianna Maitland's disappearance. At the crime site, DNA evidence was retrieved, but officials have refused to speculate on prospective leads. 
The detectives have not, however, ruled out the possibility of murder, abduction, or human trafficking. Was someone hiding inside her car and waiting for her? It's possible. We don't know, said Major Hall. However, Bruce Maitland is less optimistic about his daughter's chances. I don't think this was a random act of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. There was something going on in Brianna's life that we don't know about. She had obviously made a connection with someone that may have resulted in what happened to her, he said. Her old friend Keely Lacrosse, who assaulted Maitland three weeks before to her disappearance, was exonerated of any possible involvement in relation to her disappearance, and the charges Maitland brought against her in relation to the incident were withdrawn three weeks after she vanished. Regardless of the reasons, the inquiry into Brianna Maitland's disappearance is still open and ongoing. There has been some conjecture that Brianna's disappearance is connected to Maura Murray's disappearance. The FBI and local officials met to explore potential connections between the incidents. In both instances, there were no indications of an altercation or that the young women were injured or murdered in or around their automobiles. The police claim that both attractive young women with dark hair left their personal items in their vehicles and that they both left their automobiles unlocked. Maitland and Murray seem to have vanished without a trace, and no one has ever been tried or convicted in connection with either disappearance. Nevertheless, the FBI and law enforcement determined that, despite the apparent parallels, Murray and Brianna's situations were likely unrelated. The hypothesis cannot be ruled out altogether, but investigators feel it is unlikely. Murray's disappearance is most likely to have been an accident. The general consensus is that Murray wandered off into the woods in harsh cold weather and died from exposure. Maitland's case might have a more sinister twist. The Vermont State Police executed a search warrant in Berkshire, Vermont, after receiving an anonymous tip that Brianna was being kept against her will by two infamous New York drug traffickers, Ramon Ryans and Nathaniel Charles Jackson. They discovered drug paraphernalia and enormous quantities of cocaine and marijuana, but no trace of Brianna. Brianna was known to hang out with the Ryans and Jackson, and according to her close friends, she recently began dabbling with heavy narcotics, including crack cocaine. Jackson acknowledged knowing Maitland, but claims he last saw her more than a week previous to her disappearance. Late in 2004, police received a statement from a woman claiming that Ryans and Jackson killed Brianna. The woman claims in a written declaration that Ryans killed Brianna a week after she vanished, mutilated her corpse with a table saw, and then disposed of her remains on a pig farm. According to the woman's statement, Brianna was killed in a dispute over the several thousand dollars she loaned him to get crack, which he chose to keep and not return to her. He reportedly kidnapped and murdered Brianna when she challenged him about the money, holding her corpse in a freezer before disposing of her remains. The police were never able to find proof supporting these allegations. Maitland's case has had considerable attention from the keyboard detectives on Reddit and other forums. The contributors on these discussion boards are overwhelmingly convinced that the two cases are totally different and the similarities are coincidental. I agree that, while they didn't go into specifics why they ruled out a connection, I think the cases, when reviewed, show some differences. Maura Murray's disappearance, from what I recall about it, she was acting very strangely before she disappeared, not really like Brianna, who was going about her normal routine like any other day. Going to work, leaving work on her normal time, taking her normal route home, leaving a note for her roommate when she planned to return. Brianna didn't say or do anything out of the ordinary or out of character. One Redditor contributor has even brought the theory forward that three cases are connected by a killer that has a thing for numbers. Connection with Maura Murray, Brianna Maitland, and Jody Whitney a while back, I had mentioned the case of Jody Whitney, but I've just uncovered a very creepy coincidence. 
Here are the dates when each went missing. Maura Murray, 0209-2004 Brianna Maitland, 0319-2004 Jody Whitney, 0527-2004 Now, to most people, there is no connection between the dates, but most people would be wrong. Between the disappearance of Maura Murray and Brianna Maitland, there are exactly 40 days. Between the disappearance of Brianna Maitland and Jodie Whitney, there are exactly 70 days. Now this is where things get weird. Between the disappearance of Brianna and Jodie, there is exactly 2 months and 9 days. We know Maura disappeared on 0209, but I'm not done. Between the disappearance of Maura and Jody, there are exactly 3 months and 19 days. We know Brianna disappeared on 0319. I recall early on thinking that the perp had a thing for numbers, but this is just crazy. If this is a coincidence, then it's the biggest one I've come across in this case by far. Is there a serial killer operating that kills according to dates and numbers in Vermont? In 2006, a woman captured on surveillance footage from Caesars World Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey, closely resembled Brianna. This woman was playing poker with an unidentified man. The Vermont State Police made the trip to Atlantic City to investigate. They were unable to identify the woman, though. The Maitland family also saw this footage, but Brianna's mother is skeptical that it was her daughter. In 2007, a pair of jeans were recovered near Brianna's final known location. The police re-examined the area, but discovered nothing significant. The size of the jeans was close to Brianna's, although it is unknown if they belonged to her. Even though more than 18 years have gone by since Brianna Maitland's unexplained disappearance, there are still many unresolved questions. After her disappearance, there were a few early suspects, but the most have either died or moved out of state, so it is uncertain if fresh leads will emerge in the near future. Officially, Brianna Maitland is classified endangered and missing.